and you're always running into piles of trash. It's just it's driving me crazy. I think it's going to be the death of me if people don't start straightening up and getting their shit together and picking up their trash and taking it along with them. All right, I am glad you stopped by. You will never guess where I am right now. Go ahead, just take a guess. Nope, you're wrong. <laughs> I am at a rest area stop off the interstate for the night. And you think, what are you doing, Maddie? Well, I've got this really strong calling for the Oregon coast. I am going early. I'm just going to make my way up. And it's going to take me like two weeks to get there. Uh, you may hear a lot of trucks going by. Uh, I've got the towel up here to kind of block the side door to get a little more privacy and a little less noise. But let's see, where did we leave off last time? So I was camping in the National Forest, got to see Winston and Amanda. It was a great visit. But after a couple of days, I got to thinking, you know, the Oregon coast is calling and it's calling and it's so strong, I cannot stop it. So I thought I would head out this morning and start making my way northwest. I'm not very far uh, from the last campsite right now, but tomorrow I will head on out the 40, the I-40, and like right around uh, California, where Arizona and California meet, I will meet Yellow Wolf again because she's going to be headed that way. So we're going to caravan up 395. It's a highway, 395. I've heard about it from so many people. Justin told me about it. Chocolate Man told me about it. Um, let's see. Yellow Wolf, I think she's been there before. I think she told me about it too. But she was going to make that trip anyway. So we timed it out right where we get the caravan together. And uh, G told me a place to camp. It's south of Reno somewhere, but that's a long ways off. That's like two weeks away before I'm gonna get to Reno because I haven't even left like the Flagstaff area yet. So I'll be heading out in the morning. So I'm gonna guess uh, around two o'clock tomorrow, we might make uh, like California area. I guess we'll have to go through Oh, somebody's walking by the van. Oh, it's somebody walking a dog here in the rest area. Okay, where was I? So what we'll do is we'll leave like, you know where Havasu comes up and it hits 40. And then you take 40 and it dips down. And then it comes back up through Vegas. You know what we might do? I hear there is a trash cleanup going on in Pahrump. I want to participate in that. So I just might make a little detour through Pahrump and see if I can get in on this trash cleanup where they're cleaning up BLM land. It's very important to me. I will drive five hours. Five hours is my limit. I will drive five hours to participate in a cleanup. So maybe that'll still be going on. You got to think, I don't really need to be in Oregon until around the first of June, that's six weeks away. But the way I'm planning on doing it is it's going to take at least two weeks to get through Northern California. And there is another place in Northern California I want to go. This was, let's think, uh, two years ago, about this time, two years ago, Kevin and I stumbled upon this place and we got there at night. So we didn't realize where we were really until night. And so the next morning we got up, this place was right on the ocean, right on the California coast, Pacific Ocean, probably maybe 100 miles south of Oregon. We got up that morning and we're looking around and I said, Kevin, have we landed in Scotland? We call that place Scotland Beach because the mountain come down real steep to the ocean it was green grass all over the mountain and there was cows up there grazing and I remember saying if that was sheep up there grazing I would swear that I was in Scotland so I might want to check that place out it's uh, between 
Eureka and San Francisco. So I'd like to see that. And then kind of going up, what's that, 101? Yeah, yeah, 101 and then the 5. So probably 101 on up. And I want to go to the uh, Tillamook Cheese Factory that's in... It's in Oregon. I can't remember the name of that town. But that's that's going to be like three or four weeks away. Anyway, I, I'm just so excited. I'm ahead of myself. I love being on the road. I, it, just, it just makes me so happy. And I'm glad we timed it out well where Yellow Wolf is going to be going that way anyway. Um, so we're going to caravan together. And it's good to do that. I mean, I love solo travel. I really do, but you have to take into consideration, you know, what if you break down? You're going to need a friend there with you to watch out for you, kind of help you along, and just in case something happens. But also, you know, it's Yellow Wolf. I mean, she's just great to travel with. She's a great, great friend and companion to have along. And you want to travel with people that you get along with, that you have a good vibe with. I know I keep looking over here because I have, you're looking toward the front of the van. Back here is where my fan is and the wind keeps blowing my fan blades around and it's, I don't have the fan on so it's starting to distract me. But anyway, when you travel, if you can find a friend or two or three or four to travel with that you get along with, there's no drama, that's the way to go. And Yellow Wolf and I have traveled great together, no problems at all. So I'm looking forward to doing this stint of 395. I think uh, Chocolate Man posted some Chocolate Man in a Van is his YouTube channel. You know, I camp with him in California and all the way down to San Diego and back in Yuma. Remember, it was uh, Chocolate Man, it was Ron, and um, let's see, Mark. Uh, that's uh, Gen X Van Life 69 is Mark. Ron is Ron Sees America. And Chocolate Man in a Van. His real name's James. But his channel is so funny. But, you know, we were just a ragtag group going through the desert. We went over San Bernardino Mountains, all the way down to San Diego, and then make it a big triangle. Just a ragtag group of folks. <laughs> we had a good time, though. That was fun traveling with them. But uh, where was I? So I'll get up in the morning. I'll probably hit the road like 8 or 9. I'll need to get gas. It's going to be like a four-hour trip just to meet up with Yellow Wolf. And then after that, I think she's going to scope out that area so we can find a place where we can just camp because I'm going to be tired. I don't like to drive over five hours. That's my limit. I would prefer three. I I used to could do 10 and 12 hours, but I can't do that now. I'm just too old for that. And it's just not fun anymore to do that much travel driving in one day. So we'll probably camp there and then what's the day? Friday, Saturday, Thursday? It may be Thursday. I don't even know what day it is. But we'll hit the road and we may end up in Pahrump. If that cleanup is still going on, I would like to participate in that. That would be great to do. Because there's so much trash that you run into out here just trying to do van life and be respectable and be quiet and clean. And you're always running into piles of trash. It's just it's driving me crazy. I think it's going to be the death of me. If people don't start straightening it up and getting their shit together and picking up their trash and taking it along with them. Um, let's see. I, I get on rants. I don't know what's happening to me, but <laughs> anyway, the, the, the whole gist of the video is I am leaving Arizona and I'm making my way very slowly to Oregon, the Oregon coast to be specific. I do want to spend some time in Northern California. I'll look out for the syringes <laughs> and the hypodermic needles that are always on the ground there for some reason. I, I don't know what happened to that place. If you've ever been to Northern California, the 
the topography there, the geography, it is, it's the best you'll ever find in the world. It is so beautiful. And you can't just kick yourself thinking, what is wrong with these people dropping trash on the ground in a place like this? You would think, they would think, well, this is so pristine, I wouldn't even drop as much as a, a toothpick or a Q-tip on the ground here. But no, they trash it up terribly there. There's a place up there called White River, and there's Redwoods up there. Let's see, um, what is the name of that camp area? Josephine? Starts with a J. It's near Mount Shasta. There's no free dispersed camping in there, in that whole area. You have to pay for it, but that's fine. It's cheap. I mean, it's just like 10, 10, between 10 and $20 a night. Not bad. I'll do that for three or four nights. No problem whatsoever. But if I'm going to disperse camp for a week, then I do want it at $5 a night or free. That's, that's just me. But if I'm going to do a couple of nights, I'll do up to $20 a night, no more than that, because I got to stick on a budget. You know, I have to be mindful of my fan, my uh, financial situation. But um, I'm not opposed to paying for camping. But if I'm going to do a week, then I really need to do dispersed free camping. Mount Shasta is beautiful, and then maybe hit the 101 going up toward... Um, Brookings. Brookings, Oregon has a really soft spot in my heart. That was the place that Kevin and I went when I first saw the Oregon coast. And that's on the very southwest part of Oregon. So from there, you just go on up north all the way to Astoria, and it's just one amazing place after the other. But Brookings was, can you see the gleam in my face just thinking about it? Brookings, man, when we hit Brookings, I was just like, I couldn't believe it. It was just the most beautiful thing I had ever seen in my life. And uh, I, I'm getting carried away here just thinking about the trip. Just thinking about the Oregon coast. It's nothing like it in the world. Well, I don't know. Let me go back. Let me let me walk that back a little bit. There's nothing like it in the western USA coast. I can say that. I don't have any problem saying that. I'll stick with that. It's something about it. It's the cliffs and the big rocks and the mountains and the boulders that's out in the ocean. It's like like 500 yards out in the ocean and you still got these big boulders that's got moss on them and the waves come crashing in and one thing I noticed about when I was in San Diego I know I'm, I'm going all over the place here because I'm so excited California does things so different I don't, I don't I don't get California in so many ways California the government there thinks everybody's stupid and they treat the adults like children they had fenced off this beautiful area where there was a hole in the rocks when you walk out on the on the cliff side of the beach there was a hole there where you could look down in and you could see sea lions and and uh, seagulls and all kind of wildlife down there you know what they did they fenced that off so people wouldn't fall down in the hole well we're adults you know we're cognizant of our presence we know what's going on in Oregon, they don't do that because they realize that people have common sense. They're not going to fall down in the hole. And if they do fall down in the hole, I don't know. Maybe that's just Darwin. <laughs> but California won't give a chance for Darwin to enact itself. I don't know. So they put up this ugly chain link fence in San Diego around this cliffside beach, that, which is a natural beauty. It was unbelievable. And they put up this old rusty chain link fence. I don't know, maybe it rusted after a couple of years. All these signs, you know how signs just block up the scenery? Remember that old song? Sign, signs, everywhere the signs, blocking out the scenery, breaking my mind. 
Well, California loves to put up signs. New Mexico loves to put up signs. You can be out in the desert on a road where you pass two cars in 20 miles and there's signs everywhere. Danger this, danger that. No guardrail. Watch out for the wash and danger. Just scaring their population to death over nothing. Oh, I tend to rant sometimes. My mind wanders when I get excited. But anyway, forget the signs, forget the chain link fence. We're going to Oregon coast where they let you live. They let you be adults, but don't try to overnight park on the 101. That's not going to happen anymore. They've shut that down, but I've got some ideas of how to do it legally. There are areas in certain towns up and down the Oregon coast where you can go in and, and park. Sometimes it's free. Sometimes it's a couple of dollars a night. No big deal. I understand. I would rather pay a little bit just so they're keeping tabs on people coming in and out. It kind of lowers the robbery rate where people aren't like sticking a gun in your back at night, taking your money from you and stuff like that. Yeah, I'll pay if I have to. But I'm excited. We're going to Oregon coast. You hear that? Maybe you can't hear it. There's too many trucks going by. I have rambled long enough. Next time you see me, I don't know, maybe two or three days. I'm going to be driving a lot. I'll check in when I can. But thanks for watching. Take care, be well, and smash the bell. Mm -hmm.